I was talking to somebody the other day that had not seen the presentation and we were discussing what it was and they said the least what would how would you summarize it in uh one sentence and I was like it's like back in the day in the office when we used to have the normal flip charts I said imagine a digital version on steroids I said that was for me my interpretation of what idea have is because you roll it in you roll it out like back in the old days but now you have the digital way thanks to technology and for me as a traveler or somebody that goes into many offices i think this is a benefit the no cables situation because the number one thing you always get asked what laptop do you have? What cables do you need? And you mentioned not every computer has the same ports, not everything. Sometimes you forget it back home. Then you have to go to a local store to buy a cable because the office that you're in doesn't have one. So if we can solve this situation and so many different people can use it so easily, I can see the benefits of having this in an office. So you've mentioned so yeah, many. I, mean, I really see it. A tremendous amount of benefits just by using it and by 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 realizing that in traditional and conventional ways of having a meeting with a flip over or a whiteboard or even a smart screen you, you don't realize actually that there are certain things within there that that, that could be more efficient a, another example is when you're sharing your information for example from your computer screen to this intelligent screen then in most situations, if you want to move from one page to the other page, or, or if you want to go from paragraph to paragraph, or from one slide to the other slide, whatever information you're sharing, you always have to go back to where you put your computer in order to do that on your computer. What we've covered on this screen as well is that, because it's, it's like a supersize smart screen, you know, like a, like a smartphone screen or tablet screen. You just, you know, you, you swipe your finger and you don't need to go to where your computer is or ask someone else, could you go to the next page, please? Or could you go back? And, and last but not least, which I also think is quite interesting, in the conventional way of working, even if it's conventional smart screens, at the end of your session, you need to wipe your, your screen clean for the, for the next version to go on. With a whiteboard, you take a picture that someone else then needs to put in a computer and so on and so forth. But on a smart screen, you also need to do that. You need to take a picture of whatever you've, you've drawn or, or written down or agreed, um, you know, as, as, back, as background information. And then, you know, you, you, clean the, you clean the screen and you move on. We found a way to actually make it more intuitive. Whatever is on the screen, if you want to save it or whatever, you just click on the screen and you choose the, you select the option that says, where does it need to go to? Well, send it to my email address or send it to my WhatsApp, send it to my social media messaging channel or send it to my email or, or upload it to my cloud you know a, a, a file server or, or wherever that is T tremendously efficient if you think about it it's green yeah and you've used the word uh, easy a few times and i can definitely understand anyone watching this thinking oh yeah you know this is never as easy as it looks but during your presentation you actually demonstrated how easy it was to use. And one of the examples uh, was hashtag as easy as pen and paper because you could write and literally wipe it off with your hand. Reminded me back right. in the day of a chalkboard and you would write something and you quickly erased it. You even invited the audience at home to do a drawing, which I also did by the way. So let me show you my drawing. <laughs> oh, oh, you did? Okay. Edwin. Yeah, we did a we did a drawing class, and we said it's quite easy together to be in a drawing class. That yeah. is exactly what I've what, what I've tried to teach. Yeah, right. wow, you so were able to now, do it. To everyone well watching, you have to watch Edwin's presentation, and then this well will make sense to you. But yes, I, I did follow uh, your guidelines. So, uh, what makes Idea Hub be so responsive and accurate technologically? Yeah, th then we have to look inside the technology of how these things are being uh, baked and cooked and prepared and manufactured and produced. Um, the, the way it works with touch screens and smart screens is that there are two, two screens together and there's a layer of space between these two screens that that's goes for your smartphone, goes for your tablet, also goes for your touch screen if that's on your computer or, or a supersize um, um, smart screen in, in class, for example, or, or in your meeting room. The closer 
thicker these layers are, so, so the, 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 the smaller the gap between the inner and outer, outer screens together, the, 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 the thinner that is, so to speak, or the closer these screens are, the more accurate it becomes. But it goes along with a bit of quality. So you have to apply a bit of innovation and a bit of knowledge of what to do with screens. And as the audience, but also as you know, we, we are one of the leading companies when it comes to uh, smartphones and smart devices, which have those screens. So we've reused those technologies and those learning points into, into an, an idea that we said, we need a supersized version touch screen as if it is a tablet, as if it is a computer screen that you can touch, or as if it is your smartphone screen. So there's a zero gap right now, which is on your smartphone already that makes it very accurate. But it's also in this supersized screen that you can put on your wall, if you like, which is larger than life. So that's one. So there's a zero gap issue between the inner and outer layer of the screens that makes it more accurate. Secondly, the responsiveness of the screen is depending on how the inner technology and the, and the computing power that sits within, or the processing power, I should say, how the processing power is able to, 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 to process and calculate all these changes that you make when your hand with a stylo or a marker or, or just plain finger is on the screen as you're writing and as you go along. And that sits with latency. So the better uh, ability for for, for computing power to be processed and for processing power to be computed, which is also an element and an error that Huawei has on server storage and in the IT infrastructure side of the equation. We understand what it takes to have processors and computing services to, to match and to work at the highest level of, of, of calculation power and clock time and so to speak. So we've embedded that as well. So there's virtually no, no, no latency well, there is a bit of latency, like always, but the latency is not noticeable because it is, it is so low. But as you're writing or as you're drawing, there is virtually not, physical, not visible uh, latency, and that makes it very natural. So it's really, it's, it's really, we call it a natural handwriting experience, as if pen on paper or an ink marker on a whiteboard or a flip over. I have to say, uh, most people watching and you, Edwin, now, I've been following Huawei now for just over three years. And there is one thing that I've learned, or it keeps being validated from time to time, and is that you guys never release a product unless it's a win-win. So your answers right. on this question uh, kind of back it up because there is a lot of research that goes into what you do. Uh, for example, I did uh, watch the annual report uh, just a few days ago. And on my write-up, on my recap, I actually said this. The one thing I've learned, even though in some markets there was a decrease on sales, the overall, while we still had a growth through such a challenging year, and that's what I learned. That was my key takeaway overall, that no matter what, Huawei will never release a product unless they know it's pretty much nearly, I, I'm not going to say 100% because things can go wrong, but pretty much on a win-win that you're not going to have a recall. Because if I remember correctly, and I'm not going to name any brands here, uh, a couple of years ago during Mobile World Congress, uh, I think everybody's going to know what I'm talking about. There was a big issue with one brand versus the other who were trying to be the first to release something, but they didn't have a win-win because Huawei took a little bit slower. They took it just by a couple of weeks and then they did it right. And it shows you don't always have to be the fastest. You don't even have to be the first as long as you invest in what you're doing and you're, as we said, 90% plus or 95% plus sure that your product works.